And good afternoon, everyone. And um, yes, thank you for joining and this, joining us this afternoon. Um, I know we, it's like this uh, this time of the year where things go very very quiet suddenly. Um, so I'm glad to to see to see you all. So my name is Jérôme Garnier, and then today I will be talking about uh, our new person resources for the new 2024. MFL GCSC and how they will help your students become more confident linguists. So this is the fifth of a series of webinars on supporting you with the new 2024 MFL GCSC using our new Pearson resources. So as Nasaka mentioned, this webinar is being recorded and a recording will be made available uh, on our YouTube channel after the session. If you have any issues or queries during the webinar, um, I think rather than using the chat function, it probably would be easier to use the, the Q&A window. And then one of my colleagues will be happy to, to answer those queries um, as I'm delivering the presentation. So uh, the aim of uh, today's session is to uh, give you a quick introduction of um, the Pearson MFL product team, if you've not met us already. Um, I'm also going to present you with our new products for the new 2024 MFL GCSE for French, German and Spanish. Um, and then the main section of um, this session is to give you details on our approach at Pearson to helping students build their confidence. And for that, we will look at different areas such as how we have made our materials relatable for students, our scaffolding and progression in core lessons, uh, the way we have approached grammar. We'll also look at how our exam spreads and revision spreads are helping students build their confidence when it comes to exam preparation. And I will also mention our speaking support pages and front of class materials on Active Hub. And then when uh, we come to the end of the session, we will finish with a QA if there are any queries that have not been solved um, by my colleagues. So as I mentioned before, I'm Jerome. I am one of the uh, three publishers on the product team, and I am looking after the French student books. Um, I joined Pearson last summer after 17 years working um, in education. Um, and I also work very closely with Kate Bonnell, who is our German specialist looking after the German books and Fiona Price, our Spanish specialist working on the Spanish books. So um, in our last few webinars, Fiona, Kate and I, I've already given a very comprehensive presentations on our edXL and AQA resources, as well as planning and differentiation. So today I'm just gonna give you a quick reminder of our new courses. So we've been quite busy um, with uh, We've been working on 12 different titles, uh, Pearson at Excel Higher and Foundation, AQA Higher uh, and Foundation for French, German and Spanish. And very important to say that each title has been designed to specifically match the relevant specifications. So any example that I will talk about today will apply one way or another to both the Pearson specification, the Pearson at Excel specification and the AQA specifications. So in terms of uh, what is available and when, we do get that question quite often. Um, so just to make you aware that our streams of work are all available for AQA and Edexcel, Hire and Foundation on the website right now. For the students book, um, they are available to order or pre-order. So Edexcel Hire is ready for an order now and will be delivered in school. AQA Hire is going to be arriving imminently in schools. Um, and then Edexcel Foundation and AQA Foundation uh, will be towards the middle to the end of the month of August. So in the meantime, to help you prepare with uh, your planning, we've made quite a lot of content um, available for you. So Edexcel Higher is available, uh, module one to three, um, if you don't want to purchase the books. Um, AQA Higher, we've got uh, module one to six available for you um, at Excel Foundation and AQA Foundation, one module for the moment. And then our digital resources, um, which I will talk about now. In terms of Active Hub, uh, the new users uh, can have a 30 days free trial from the 28th of June. You can sign up now on the websites. 
And if you are an existing customer, uh, there is an automatic free migration uh, starting this week. So hopefully some of you have already been able to access those materials. And at the next renewal date after the 1st of September, you will renew on Active Hub and still continue to have access to Active Learn until September 2025. Um, in terms of the course structure for both the print and the digital side, um, all the books are made of eight modules, all starting with a culture spread. And then we have the core content made of four, five or six um, different units. We have grammar practice um, to go over the grammar that has been done in the core pages, followed by exam practice on all four skills, so listening and reading speaking and writing skills and those are specific to the tier and to the exam boards that um, they relate to. Uh, we also have vocabulary pages and then at strategic points of uh, the course we have uh, three grammar revision so after module two after module five and after module eight and it is a very wholesome practice of the grammar. So after module two, we'll encompass the grammar for module one and module two. And after module five, all the grammars for modules one to five and so on. And towards the end of the book, you also have revision modules. So we've decided to come up with one spread per module, which is focused practice on the module themes and vocabulary. It's a very good opportunity for that recycling and that retrieval practice and will also give the students further exam practice tasks. Those tasks, those activities are using the exam style questions, so very, very good for the students to practice. We also have speaking support pages and I will give you a bit of an insight on those a little bit later today. So the conversation questions, the phonics, the role play skills, the photo cards, the verb tables and the derivational morphology. And on Active Hub, obviously, we have a, a huge amount of um, materials. So all the ebooks, the surrounding resources, including the audio, the transcript, um, independent practice and assessments and insights. But I'm going to start today. Uh, talking about uh, getting your students to become confident linguists uh, by talking about something that is very important for us, that relatability. And relatability has been really at the forefront of our conversations with students, with teachers, and during the planning and the development of our resources. So the diversity, equity and inclusion aspects of the books will mean that more students will be able to relate to the content, to relate to the content to their own lived experience. And that in itself will enhance their confidence. We really wanted to ensure that there is a part of all your students represented somewhere in the books. So we have made sure to include organic representation and visibility of ethnicity, disability, body sizes, sexual and gender identity throughout the textbooks. And students say that they, they wanted to feel fully represented in our resources. So we have included some information on inclusive writing in all three languages. In French, we have mentioned non-binary pronouns as well as in German and in Spanish. We've really taken that aspect and made sure that the students can confidently use that information to talk about themselves and their identity. Um, we also talked about progression and supports on, on the course press, that visible and logical progression, which we think is key to enable students to become confident linguists. So that's why we are starting every module of every book in every language with a culture spread. So the culture spread is that double page which is packed with relevant information about the target language, language countries. The topics have been selected to boost the cultural curiosity of the students. And it provides a smooth introduction of the module with accessible activities and accessible language. And those rich visuals on the spreads also supports uh, with the student's initial thinking and allows for classroom discussion. So the example you have in front of you is from module one of French. So talking about um, events in the Francophone world between the Dijour sans écran, which is 
an initiative from uh, the French government to La Fête de la Musique, Les Jeux de la Francophonie. So very, very interesting um, events that will really sort of anchor the culture within the module. Um, so I've decided to talk about progression um, to walk you through a, a whole module uh, quite quickly. I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'm not going to bore you with all these details. But I'm going to just show you that logical progression within the module. So this uh, for Excel is thematic contexts of my personal world and my neighborhood. And AQA, that would be theme two, popular culture, and theme three, communication and the world around us. So to start with, we've got that culture spread. Um, and uh, we have this really online browsing theme. OK, so it starts with online browsing for apartments or Airbnbs. And on the right, it's more about clothes shopping. So that's a very nice way to set up um, that that topic of local area and town as well as shopping in town. So the first unit focuses on describing the town or a village. It still draws to the sorry, it still draws the attention on cultural capital with different towns from the French speaking world. So we have Alger from Nigeria, we've got Rouen and Lyon in France, we've got Montréal in Canada, with some interesting and true facts about those places. So that will, if we look at the objectives, for example, it's talking about describing your town or village, so students will be able to actually relate that to where they live. And then the second unit focuses on, more on places in town, with the added asking for and understanding directions. It also gives a different perspective on how students can describe their town with prepositions, for example. So we've taken also this opportunity to revisit the imperative and ways to ask questions which have come up in module four already. But you may notice as well on um, exercise seven, that writing seven, that it draws on language and structures which have been seen in this unit as well as the previous one. Now, once the students know how to navigate around town, how about shopping for clothes with retrieval of clothes vocabulary as well as transactional language found in earlier modules? And we also take this opportunity to revise the perfect tense. Now, Let's dive a bit deeper. Let's dive a little bit deeper on the topic of your ideal house after that. You can see that the structure of C plus imperfect plus conditional is introduced. So we are gaining in challenge and in complexity of the language. And then we will finish the module on something which is a little bit more open-ended. So talking about visiting another city or another town. So we take again the opportunity here to revisit key vocabulary and structures seen in this module, that C plus imperfect plus conditional. Um, but also in previous modules, we've got mentions of the simple future as well as modal verbs. <clears throat> and we are also um, talking about different ways of asking questions and in different tenses. So obviously, hopefully that has given you a bit of an idea in terms of that logical progression within the module. Um, but now I'm going to dive a little bit deeper onto just the spreads themselves or score pages. So <clears throat> um, every spread starts with an introduction of single items of vocabulary, sometimes dual coded or important structures. So you've got an example here about German, and you've got an example here as well on Spanish. So it is important that we set the scene of what is to come on the spread so that the students feel confident and empowered to meet the challenge of the subsequent activities on the page. Now, for the first time in a very long time uh, at Pearson, we have also written all the instructions and rubrics in English. And for two reasons, because we want to make sure that the students are clear about what is being asked of them, for both foundation and for higher. But we also wanted to mirror what they will experience in their GCSE exam, where all the rubrics are also in English. So we've got um, three distinct examples, a reading from uh, the Spanish textbook, we have a listening from the German textbook, and we also have a speaking from the French textbook. 
in terms of the progression on the page, you know, we've just looked at the progression in the whole module, but what does it look like on an actual page? And for this one, I've chosen this spread from Edexcel French Higher, module five, unit two, on the topic of mental health. Now, just to talk about that topic a little bit, during our early stages of planning and research, teachers and students said that it was a topic that was very important for them, so they were able to talk about it, and we listened and we acted on it. If you attended our previous webinars, you may now be more familiar with how spreads work, but I wanted to exemplify how this specific page work, for example. So we start off with an activity that follows, sorry, that allows for an introduction of vocabulary. So talking about how you feel, so happy, sad, angry, tired, worried, or calm. Students are asked to listen and identify the correct emotion and a reason why. Now, it says they have to give the reason why in English. We then expand on the learning with different advice. So this branches up some to some grammar work on the imperative and the two form, as well as negatives as well as in the negatives. The third activity is a brings that learning together in a receptive way. Students need to listen and check their answers. And the final activity on this page is, is a productive task. It is that conversation using picture prompts where students have to reuse the vocabulary from the spread. If they want to include other vocabulary, they are more than welcome to as well. But the main focus is for them to reuse the vocabulary from the spread. And this scaffolded approach is something that we know you appreciate and that really helps your students become more confident. There are other ways that we also support your students in becoming more confident. We have included tip boxes, those easily recognizable in bright yellow with the gold star in the corner, and those tip boxes give a little bit of general help on an activity or a range of activities. We have also used call outs on some activities such as translation, for example, like we have here in Spanish. Um, th those call outs are there to support with a very specific point of the activity, and it could be there to help with grammar, for example, it could be just a reminder about a word to use, a direct advice, or a word or structure for the students to use. We have also included more key language groups that will help students with language and structure manipulation and comprehension. And those are also ed editable, so we available as editable documents, um, as Word documents and PowerPoints on Active Hub. But I will talk about those a little bit later in the presentation. Um, another way to support your students become more confident li uh, linguists is to give access to the audio transcripts as fully editable words documents that will allow you, for example, to create gap fill activities or to transform the listening into a reading activity or just simply for your students to follow along while the recording is playing. I have ex exemplified it on, this, um, on the slide for you with the actual audio script at the top and the way it's presented on Active Hub and an example of how you could adapt this script into a gap fill activity for some extra support. So we also have um, vocabulary pages. Oops, did I miss one? Sorry. Um, oh, yes. Um, something new as well for Active Hub, although if you are familiar with our key stage three resources, you will know that as part of our updates with the phonics um, and the vocabulary packs. We have also started to include uh, sentence builders slash key language grids. And we are bringing that along to our key stage four products as well. Um, oh, wrong one, sorry. Um, those are the enhanced PowerPoints. Um, uh, yes, so instead of displaying the answers, uh, we have also added uh, the original text and the transcript on the PowerPoint slide and uh, showing you and showing the students where the answers could be found. So, for example, 
here for number one, it says Elif, yeah, so how are they described? They are described as proud. We know that that is a real time saver for the teachers and equally a very useful tool for the students. So the vocabulary pages, there we go, back onto those. Um, those vocabulary pages um, list a selection of productive and receptive skills vocabulary that is met in the module. The lists are also available as editable Word document on Active Hub. Now on those pages, um, the words in bold are higher only vocabulary. And we have also decided to include some off-spec vocabulary with an asterisk that we felt was important and relevant in the module and that students could still use or want to use in their writing or their um, speaking exams. Um, I'm also going to touch on uh, differentiation and our parallel teaching approach. Now, in a previous webinar, I already talked um, in a lot of detail about our parallel approach to teaching mixed ability. And it's just a reminder that the books have been designed so each language has a higher end foundation version that matches the specification and that by choosing which one to, to use or by combining both of them, you can make your students a bit more confident. So both high end foundations have been written in parallel exactly at the same time. And so that will give you the freedom to customize your own students' progression tailored to their needs and helping you prepare your students for the exam in a way that actually suits them. So here is an example of a French page from module eight, unit two. Uh, on the left hand side, you have the higher version and on the right hand side, you have the foundation version. Uh, as you can see, both pages are looking very similar. They have identical titles and objectives, but it's worth bearing in mind that sometimes the objectives might differ depending on specification requirements for the grammar, for example. It's very important for us that students are exposed to the same cultural capital content. Just because a student is doing foundation does not mean that they shouldn't be able to access the fact, uh, the fact that the text is taking place in Canada, for example. Here in particular, you can see that the activities can be run concurrently at the same time in the classroom as well. Um, now an example of the German uh, book. Again, the spreads are looking very similar, but if you look closely, the vocabulary and the grammar match to your specific requirements. So we have more voc vocabulary uh, of the body on the higher and slightly less on the foundation. You can also observe that on this page, more support is given on foundation for the productive task in the form of a key language grid. We felt that for this spread in particular, the students could benefit from having that extra bit of support. And for a Spanish example, uh, we wanted to highlight the fact that the font size on the student books, uh, the foundation books is a little bit larger as well. So the text do not look as daunting as they would in the higher books. We have also another example here of how grammar is matching to specific um, requirements. More support and more scaffold is also given for the listening activity that exercise two here. While for the higher activity, it asks to not down the details in English, the foundation activity is giving the students multiple choice. Um, so again, that extra support, that extra scaffold, just boosting the student's confidence. We also know that grammar is very important in the new GCSE, and there are obvious differences between higher and foundation. So in order to help your students become more confident when dealing with grammar, we have looked for ways to do so without compromising student progress. <clears throat> so there is a webinar on the um, 11th of July, just on our grammar approach, but I will just give you just a little bit of uh, details today. So our grammar explanation on the core pages 
of the student books are tailored to the correct tier. And I've picked this um, example. I'm not sure why there is like a recurring theme of the imperative today. Um, but we have the foundation version on the left and the higher version on the right. And both of them deal with how to form the imperative to give advice or instructions using the to form in French. Now, the verb être, to be, is not on the grammar list for the imperative in foundation for either AQA or Edexcel, but we have decided not to include it for foundation. However, it does feature in the higher book. And as mentioned, when breaking down the structure of the book, we have dedicated grammar pages at the end of each module. And those offer students the opportunity to practice specific grammar points taught in the module using the vocabulary that is specific to that module. So very important that it is self-contained within that module using the vocabulary that is found in the module only. And one aspect of the grammar pages that is a little bit different from what we have done before um, is the fact that we have included exercises in all four skills. So we believe it is important and beneficial for the students to meet and practice grammar in context and in different forms. And here I have just picked a selection of um, grammar tasks in a, a variety of skills. So the reading with the Venn diagram or the reading with um, rewriting the sentences using the, the relative pronouns, uh, we've got a, a dice game uh, with a speaking activity. Um, we've got that typical writing that we know that we've used before of the gap field conjugating the verb. Um, in the perfect tense or using the uh, the negative form as well. <clears throat> and as well, we've also used it in listening. Um, you know, practicing in all four skills is actually very, very important. And it is something that will get the students more confident when using and when understanding specific aspects of the grammar in the exam. Um, so talking about exams, um, we've also designed the exam spreads um, to um, boost the student confidence. And the way we've approached the exam practice truly benefits the students and their confidence. They're not just another series of exam style questions. They are matched to the specifications and the tier. Okay, we have thoroughly analysed the specifications and the sample assessment materials for all boards, all languages and all tiers. So your students are getting a very similar experience without the pressure of looking at a past paper. We have approached many different types of exam questions in all four skills for all the tiers. And here you will see an example of German Edexcel Higher, an exercise mirroring that two-part questions that you have in a reading exam, including that inference questions, which of these is the best translation of the word that is found in bold and in italic in the texts. There's also that French Edexcel Foundation translation into English matched match to the Edexcel Foundation tier using single sentences. And then an AQA French higher listening question, again, mirroring that multiple choice questions that you can find in the sum. The layout is a little bit different, but the form stays the same. It is that question with the multiple choice. We have provided model answers in the student books uh, for those productive tasks with further guided practice. So in, in, in this example, students start by looking at that 80 to 90 words uh, writing task question. And they then are tasked to with analyzing the question and make notes on uh, various aspects of the bullet points. So it says, for example, nouns and verbs to say what there is or what students can do. Uh, can they list verbs and opinions and adjectives to explain reasons and so on. And then a, a model answer is provided. So that would be this example here on the left hand side, on the right hand side. 
Um, that model answer is asking students to improve some of the aspects of the model answer. For example, it could be um, avoiding repetition, what kind of connected could be used in order to make the sentence a little bit more complex. And the final task, um, which is not shown here, um, but is the very obvious one of asking the students to complete the 80 to 90 word writing tasks. Now, it's very important to note that model answers have also been made available and recorded for um, speaking tasks. So there will be model um, picture description, there will be modeled um, role play tasks um, on the speaking pages. Um, deliberate guided practice is also playing an important part in developing students' confidence. So an example uh, to show you today is our approach to the role plays and the photo descriptions. Um, the whole task here about the, uh, the picture description um, has been broken down um, into three parts for Excel and two parts for AQA. So the students listen to someone doing the task and then they pick up elements before completing those elements themselves. So they listen to somebody doing the photo description and then they will prepare their own photo description. And then they will listen to the two uh, unprepared questions and then they will have to respond to those two questions. And then there is that last part, that, that conversation on the broader thematic context. And uh, the students will just hear an extract of that and do some work on that to make them more confident and more familiar with those. And just like um, any other aspects of the student books, support is given on the exam spreads in the form of call outs, tip boxes and pronunciation boxes. So those call outs, really refer to a very specific point of the task that really help and guide the students um, to do the best that they can. Okay, in the role play, for example, it could be to help them with how to start that very specific prompt. Um, in the translation, it could be, you know, reminding them what tense they could be using for it. Or in the read aloud, it's about are they making the liaison in French or are they, are they being mindful when uh, pronouncing the cognates? So all of those are used to really support the students, not just for foundation, but also for those higher students. <clears throat> Um, and success criteria. We know they are essential for students learning modern foreign languages, particularly in writing tasks, as they can significantly boost students' confidence. They help the students navigate the, the complexities of the language, reducing feelings of uncertainty or overwhelm. They can also stu enhance students' self-assessment skills and enabling them to, to monitor the progress and identify areas for improvement. And they can also help you to provide targeted feedback and support. So on the writing um, exam pages, we have included um, success criteria or challenge checklists um, for all the writing um, tasks that we have included. <clears throat> so you will be able to use those and the students will be able to use those for self-assessment as well. The revision pages, um, they also play a significant role in raising students' confidence. They, they have been designed to allow students to, to review and consolidate their learning um, of the course. The process of revisiting and reinforcing knowledge can really help your students feel more prepared and more confident. So they include practice questions or exercises which give your students the opportunity to apply what they have learned and gain further confidence. Now, the difference between the exam spreads and the revision spreads is the exam spreads are meant to be used at the end of each module. The revision spreads are meant to be used at the end of the course. So used as revision prior to their exam at the end of year 11. <clears throat> All the revision pages 
start with a refresh your memory section that is designed to rejig the student's memory on the topic, often in the form of a retrieval activity. Uh, you could consider these as, as warm up activities before diving into the exam style questions. Um, the same form of support, again, is given on areas where we feel students might need that little bit of boost when they are revising. Just because it's that revision time, it does not mean that the students don't need any more support. I think sometimes they do still need that final bit of you know, guidance to make sure that they are understanding um, those last little bit of more challenging language. And we know that for the majority of students, speaking is the most feared skill. I think as an ex-teacher myself, I think it's safe to say that we've all experienced those students with the legs shaking, the knuckles cracking, the voice trembling, and, and even for the girls, you know, the tights pulling and all the signs of really nervous students. And those speaking support pages have really been designed to give the students a really comprehensive and reassuring set of tools on how to approach that skill. So my colleague Kate will be delivering a webinar on speaking on Tuesday, the 2nd of July for AQA and Wednesday the 3rd of July for Edexcel. So there is a, a, a QR code to sign up later in the session. So what we have done is we have come up with a list of suggested conversation questions to support the students for the read aloud and the picture tasks. They have been grouped by modules as well as thematic contexts or themes. Um, there are around 10, 11 or 12 questions per module um, and those can obviously be used for the students to practice those conversation parts for the read aloud or for the picture tasks. We have placed, I think because of the demand of the new GCSE, a bigger focus on phonics throughout the book. And we've put everything together in a student-friendly table with the isolated uh, sound symbol correspondences. Example of the words that they will have met in the book using those SSCs. The page references where those uh, sound symbol correspondences have been met. And we have also put them in full sentences that are just focusing on those SSCs. So, so for example, with the sound R, ah, we've got Allé, Table, Magasin, Social, and then Il y a un Centre Social. We have also um, provided you with an accompanying audio to help the students practicing those SSCs. So they will hear native speakers read out the sounds, read out the words, read out the sentences, so they can read along and they can also repeat them as well. Role play guidance um, is also given for transactional role plays for Excel and conversational role plays for AQA, so they are very different pages if you look at the books. Um, because the needs are different. So the pages on the Edexcel books really focus on the settings because we know there are 10 possible settings for the role plays, useful vocabulary that can be used, and example of questions that students can ask depending on the settings. Whereas AQA, is, the focus is more on the converse, conversational aspects of the role play. But, Regardless of the exam board, both of them and with a worked example with the uh, with the prompt and with the conversation. <clears throat> and we've done the same for the picture task and the photo card. So the photo description aspect has been broken down into plan. So the people, the location and the activity with the added um, advice of now checking for the accuracy, accurately, sorry, checking for the accuracy. Um, there are key language grids to support students with a good description of the picture or the pictures. Um, 
And there are also subsequent sections on the two unprepared follow-up questions and the broader conversation for Edexcel and for AQA, just that one subsequent section on the unprepared conversation. We have also added some extra practice on derivational morphology uh, on all the prefixes and suffixes detailed in the Edexcel and the AQA specifications. So anything that has been mentioned, we have included. But to support, sorry, the support to turn your students into confident linguists does not stop um, at the student books. Our new platform, Active Hub, also offers a wide range of additional resources to support you and your students. So, uh, firstly, the speaking confidence worksheets. So, throughout the course, um, there are speaking confidence worksheets designed to help the students with specific aspects of speaking skills. So, in this instance, um, the sheet is about general conversation and using the question to formulate answers. So, the progression through the activities is logical, starting with a familiar receptive task, progressively asking students to pick out details and information, such as tenses, eventually ending with a speaking game and a practice activity with self or peer assessment. There are also more general skills worksheets with a specific focus on one particular skill. So those can be used in class as part of the lesson or as an out of class activity for homework, for example, or for cover work. Um, in the German example on the left, the, the skills worksheets um, helps the students with giving opinions and reason. And the French example on the right deals with the translation skills. The progression of activities on the sheets is very logical and very evident. And as they are provided as um, edit editable Word documents, you can add, remove or change the activities. And you can also combine with the activities on the foundation version of the worksheet, for example. We also have phonics practice. I'm not going to say too much on that um, because that will be part of the speaking webinar later in July. Um, but again, we have um, taken the um, very popular uh, resource that we have created for Key Stage 3 with our new phonics pack and resources, and we have also included them for Key Stage 4. Uh, so starting with, uh, so I think this one is, yeah, this one is about cognates, um, so listening and practicing these cognates, and then getting the students to actually say it, and then checking it, and then finally that uh, reading aloud practice. We've also included um, sentence builders um, on Active Hub. So they are editable Word documents, uh, but you also have a version or as a PowerPoint. You've got a version with or without the English, just to give you that choice and that freedom of what you can use. I'm just conscious of the time. Um, there is uh, another one, which um, I'm hoping is going to work, uh, which is an audio. Um, that we are providing you with that can be slowed down. So this is a video and I am hoping that the sound should work. Unité 4. Qu'est-ce qu'on va faire? Page 14, exercice 1. Listen to the voicemails. For each one, write the letter of the correct advert and when they are going to do it. For example, tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. 1. Salut, c'est moi. Ce matin, à 10 heures, je vais aller à la piscine. Tu viens? So it can be decreased to a very, very, very slow speed. Um, 
so again that is something that is uh, that we think is very helpful and another aspect that I wanted to touch up on from uh, our active hub is our independent practice uh, so again this is a little video apologies up oh, voila um so I I'm going to spoil alert. I got it wrong on purpose to show you what would happen. Uh, so after you check the answer, you actually get feedback. And instead of saying that something is wrong and telling the students to try again, which would affect their confidence, the, the feedback is actually detailed and it gives supportive feedback before giving students another chance to um, try so on this one for example it's I can asking them well I actually see my screen uh, what does il mean what does l mean just to make sure that they are just thinking carefully and then they get to just correct themselves um check the answer and then move on to the next activity so um I hope it has been very insightful um so we still have a couple of webinars um, left. Uh, so we have uh, making the most of key stage three. We've got developing confidence in speaking. Those are for AQA customers and uh, the same before our peers and Edexcel customers. And then on the 11th of July, we've got one on the grammar in context. Um, so you can sign up using the QR codes that are in front of you. So we've got the qualifications team still running, some getting ready to teach um, events. Uh, I think I am scheduled to attend one of those next week. Uh, so if I see you to one of them, you know, please do come and say hi. And we still, this is the second one is the QR code for signing up to our product event. So the, the key stage three, the speaking and the grammar. Um, so thank you very much for coming along tonight. Uh, I'm just going to pick up on some of the Q&A and we'll invite uh, Danny. Do we have any any Q and A? Yes. Um, can you hear me? Okay, Jerome. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, there's been a few coming through, and please do add some more into the into the chat. So um, there have been a few questions about the vocab pages in the student books and whether they are representative of all the vocabulary covered in that particular module. So I'll attempt to answer that, and then Jerome can can correct me. So the vocab pages in the student books are a summary for students, really, of, of the kind of key productive vocabulary. They don't show all the specification vocab that has been covered in that module because that would be a little overwhelming. It would be a very long list and it wouldn't be terribly accessible for, for students themselves. So if you were wanting to see all the vocab covered in a module, the best place to see that is in the schemes of work, which are freely available on, on our website. Um, so yeah, those vocab pages are a, a bit of a snapshot of, of key productive vocabulary, um, but they don't necessarily show every every specification vocab item that is covered in a in a module. Anything no, to true. add to that, Jerome? <laughs> No, no, the, the, this is absolutely fine. I think uh, when people ask to see the vocabulary or the vocabulary pages, th the best place to look at is the scheme of work because it will give you that real representation of which vocabulary has been included. The, 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 the vocabulary lists, the vocabulary pages in the textbook are really a tool for the students. They're not really um, used you know, to dictate your teaching. That's what the scheme of work is about. Thank you, Shreem. Um, And then let me just have a look through the other questions coming through. There's a question around um, the audio, actually, and whether the recordings, the audio recordings are repeated three times for an Excel um, or just for the, or just, is that just the case on the exam practice um, audio recordings? So, so the audio in the core pages, um, we it's a bit difficult to, to to answer without showing you the on the core pages it, it's just repeated twice but when it comes to the exam spreads for edexcel they are repeated three times for aqa they are repeated twice except for the dictation which is repeated three times now the way it is set up on active hub you can go back 
and rewind yourself to exactly where you want. So if you wanted the students to have that third listening on our core pages, you could do that yourself quite easily. Okay, extreme. Um, there are a few people asking around, um, now I think there are a few people about issues with downloading the, the packs for this session. So um, we'll follow up with you over email if you have had an, an issue downloading the packs and make sure that you've got access to those. And likewise, is um, somebody asking around um, not being able to find a link to the grammar in context CPD session that's coming up. Um, and so we will look into that and, and um, let people know where, where that link is. So if you're wanting to attend that session, you absolutely can. Um, just looking through the other questions that have come through. I think they're the main ones. Am I missing anything? Kate, who's also on the call? Who is Kate on the call? <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, I think we've covered everything. I said we certainly answered everything in the chat. So yeah. I think that's visible to everybody. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, yeah, I can't see anything else coming through, Jerome. So we're probably good to wrap up. And I think people will be given access to the recording of this session as well, won't they? Yes, this should do. And it will be available on YouTube as well at some point in the upcoming week. Brilliant. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending. Uh, please do, do get in touch uh, if you have any further questions. Uh, we will look at uh, what is happening in terms of um, the... Uh, any of the remaining uh, sessions which are not showing. And we, uh, I hope you have a good rest of your evening and thank you very much.